Hello, soul loves. It's Kimberly, and I'm going to combine the Scorpio new moon um, forecast with the weekly forecast and the energies that we've got building up because we've got a lot of intensity this week with going in uh, Mars going into a Gazemi on Friday, and I'll be doing a live collaboration with Louisa on Thursday afternoon. So we'll dive deep into the Kazemi and then I'll do an all signs thing for that too. So a lot going on this week. So this week's energy intertwines two powerful narratives. It's a journey into deep introspective energy and rejuvenation energy under the Scorpio's influence and the period of rebirth and recharge as we prepare for this year going into its ending into the last days of the year the cosmos beckons us to dance into the transformation offering opportunities of personal growth revelations relationship building and self-reflection so on monday the 13th scorpio <coughs> there's a scorpio new moon okay it's a new moon in scorpio so this week launches with this new moon in scorpio and it's a time of intense emotional transformational energy so this lunar phase is conjoining mars and opposing uranus uranus is in taurus and i just did a thing on the intensity of that energy so you can watch that one too i'll link it to this um i gave like how to survive through it and like crystals and aroma um essential oils that you can use during that time period okay so it's not a, just about new beginnings, but it's about profound transformation. Scorpio urges us to devil deep into our inner depths, confronting and releasing deep seated emotions and patterns. And Mars amplifies our drive, focusing on our energies, on our goals, with renewed passion while uranius hints at unexpected shifts and breakthroughs so on tuesday we have um there's going to be some uh, emotional communication and sagittarius optimism so the moon will be transitioning into sagittarius and we'll experience a shift from the inner perspective energy and the, uh, to extra, ex, to be an extrovert. Okay. The moon's conjunct with Mercury and Tetanism. So the moon will be transitioning into Sagittarius and we'll experience a shift from the inner perspective energy and the, uh, to extra, ex, to be an extrovert okay the moon's conjunct with mercury the venus fosters open optimistic communication and enhances relationships and it's a day for sharing dreams and connecting emotionally finding inspiration in social circles and on and on wednesday it's creative expression and caution midweek as mercury sextiles venus the mood lightens and there's a flirtation and creative energies however the moon square with neptune advises caution suggesting that uh the free flow of ideas without immediate um contemplation of it and commitment to it 
Well, it's just the idea until you commit to it and take action with it. It's time to enjoy the lighthearted interactions and let the imagination guide you. So um, on Thursday, Capricorns, the, the moon goes into Capricorn. So it's Capricorn's practical magic. So the moon ingresses it, and that means it moves into it, into Capricorn. It's going to bring focus on practicality and achievement. This energy is about channeling emotions into productive activities. And the, the uh, sextile of Saturn enforces discipline, while the trine to Jupiter brings hope, expansion, reminding us that um, per perseverance leads to success. And then Friday, Mars goes in to the heart of the sun. And it's all about artistic inspiration and cosmic alignment. So it's a day of artistic and empathic energies. It's going to unfold as the sun forms um, a trine with Neptune and this conjunct with Mars. It's um, a perfect time for your artistic pursuits and getting swept away in the magic of creativity. So the sun crossing Mars brings the spotlight on ambition, drive, and potentially leading to unexpected personal revelations as Mars goes into the heart of the sun, into this Kazemi that we have not seen this exact lineup since 1991. And so the the Mars will go into the heart of the sun and then he'll be like undercover and then he'll rise back in Capricorn in January. And we've not had the same configuration and, and it's actually a two year cycle. So whatever was going on in your life, think back about it. It's the same house that it was in 1991 to 1993, the two big energies. So what was going on in your lifetime during that time period? And, you know, this energy also can, um, uh, you know, there's, there can be combustion. There can be things, explosive things that happens in the collective on that day. Okay, so we want to focus on how we can bring it in and expand it into our, in our artistic and our creativity. And when anytime when something has a, a Kazemi with the sun, when it goes into the heart of the sun, then that's when you can get messages directly from, you know, the sun is our all lot. It's our all sustaining lot that comes in so you can get ahas and ideas so if you align yourself to that then you can receive the downloads to 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 your action to the you know the most beneficial action for you okay and then and then on saturday the 18th aquarius there's a social spark and moderation energy the moon moves into Aquarius and it focuses on uh, it shifts to community and innovation energy. So it's going to uh, square Jupiter, which might challenge the collective efforts, emphasizing on a need for individuality within interconnectedness. So it's a day to enjoy social dynamics but also practical moderation and not to overindulge. Okay. And then on Sunday, Sunday, the 19th, we're breaking patterns and we're embracing change. So as the week concludes with the moon and Aquarius trining Venus, sextile and Mercury, fostering connections and stimulating conversations. The square to Uranus could bring surprises, 
urging us, to, you know, Uran Uranius is that inner freak flag, okay? Bring surprises, bringing us to break free from habits and embrace change. Um, and it's a day, it's also a day for social interactions and new perspectives, but you, it may also be a day that you see where your, what your habits have been and what your habits that are sabotaging you. And there could be, you know, a big, huge insight that comes to you with that. So I'm going to go into more into the new moon and then we'll go and then we'll go into each, each sign and your house that that's going to affect for you. So the conclusion of the, you know, the overall week is that it offers a vivid tapestry of emotional depth, optimistic expir exp expirations, practical achievement. So from the Scorpio's transformative power to Aquarius liberating energies and the Mars expansion through I'm going to say divine masculine, not the warring masculine energy. Okay, we're going to erase that and we're going to restore Mars back to sustainability and correct action. So it's going to invite us to embrace the changes and prepare for um, the ending of, you know, the beginning, the last days of this year and what we're going to create ahead of us. Okay, so let's see, where are we going to? Okay, this new moon in Scorpio. Scorpio energy, this new moon, you know, new moons are always about a beginning. It's about planting seeds. So this, um, it's carries with it the potent energy that can help you shed light on the old and embrace the new. Okay. And how this Scorpio new moon, this energy that will activate within us and carry us through, you know, to the full moon. And that's when we will, uh, the full moon is when you, you harvest, you harvest the seeds that you plant now. So this is what you're doing. Okay. In this powerful period of change. So understanding this Scorpio energy, it's ruled by the intense transformational planet of Pluto, which is the modern day ruler and Mars ish Scorpio's um, ancient ruler and Mars is in Scorpio right now. Okay. So it's Scorpio is known for its depth, for its passion, for its ability to unveil hidden truths. It's associated with transformation, with rebirth, with regeneration. And so when this new moon occurs there, the energy is amplified and we're invited to take profound journey within ourselves. It's time for metamorphosis in this energy. At the heart of this new moon, Scorpio is the theme of the metamorphosis. Just like the scorpion shedding its old exoskeleton to reveal stronger, even more vibrant self. We too are encouraged to let go, to let go of what no longer serves you. This lunar event urges us to release the outdated patterns, fears, and attachments that hold us back. And so one of the key aspects that I mentioned before is this uh, Uranus opposition to Mars. And as I said, I did a whole video on that and you can go watch that one. Okay, it's one of the key aspects during this new moon because they're happening here at the same time. So uh, this opposition between Uranus and Mars, the planet of awaken, innovation, challenges Mars, the planet of action and desire. The cosmic dance asked us to break free from the illusions and the outdated paradigm that no longer serves our highest good, the collective's highest good. It don't serve anybody's highest good, okay? It calls for a shift in consciousness, leading us away from reactive behavior and towards more enlightenment choices. 
So this energy is about embracing the cosmic support. The new moon brings with it support of the cosmic forces. Neptune is trining that it's making a triangle with sun, moon, and Mars. It's encouraging us to dissolve our egoic boundaries and connect to higher consciousness. Pluto sextiling the celestial bodies assist in the release of the old structures, the old systems that hinder our growth. These transpersonal planets are guiding us toward a deeper connection with spirituality, with compassion, with the oneness of all existence. So it's, we, we'll, we, we can choose to reconnect to earth energies during this time period because this energy can play a significant role it, with this new moon. What is your mission on earth, people? What are we here for? It's not to kill each other. No, that's old shit. That's an old paradigm. That's an old God, okay? It's like, it's not about that righteous energy of that and warring and taking over other people's shit. Okay, to be in the right alignment with our will and rep that's represented by Mars, we must also be in alignment with the energies of Earth herself, with Gaia. This alignment helps us realize the significance of our relationships with Earth's resources and all life forms. Mars at 22 degrees Scorpios embodies the process of metamorphosis. A journey of um, unconscious reactivity to higher consciousness. We can just be on autopilot with that and not go back into the old stuff. This new moon emphasizes the importance of making decisions from our true selves rather than from the conditioned one, the one that's conformed to social, you know, it, it's the social experiment. And expectations. This symbol enforces us to um, be transformative nature in this lunar event. It's, it's a choice point. As we navigate these energies of the new moon in Scorpio, we find ourselves at a critical choice point, and it's a time to decide which path do you, are you going to follow? Which which one are you here to follow? Wake up. If, if we stumble to fear and back to reactivity, then the powers of, of the old paradigm will keep us in that. It'll keep us. It'll, it'll still have us by the kahunas, okay? If we transform into this path of collaboration and compassion, then what can we can create? It's our choice. This is our choice. This is the path that we're at. It will have a profound impact on our personal growth and the collective consciousness. Because when you, when it, it happens with one, the change happens here. And so when it happens, then that vibrates out into the masses, into all that you come in contact with and all that, that come within your vibration. It can activate and awaken them. Okay. And you just go, this or something better. What is it? It's like, let it go, turn it over and let this or something better happen. Okay, so it's a cosmic invitation to embark on this journey of discovery, transformation, healing, and it encourages us to release the O, to make choices that align with our higher selves of well-being of our planet. And embrace this as a celestial event is an opportunity to shed the old past and embrace the future of love and light and commit to the right relationships within ourself. Okay, and each other and to earth. So that's where we're at with that. So now let's take a look at all 12 signs. So I'm going to go into that for you all. Okay, all. Okay, I am Kimberly Crow. I am a Western astrologer and I am using the whole sign system for this energy forecast analysis. So listen up to your rising sign. You have to know the time that you were born to know your rising sign. That's what you came to embody and to arise to, okay? Your sun 
is your personality. It's what you embodied when you came in. It's what you project out to others and what they project back to you. It also could be male authority figures in, in your chart, and it could represent male authority figures in your life. Your moon is your emotional IQ. It's how you process the emotions, the, the waves and tides of, of all that there is that you wave through in this life. It is nurturing energy and it could represent mother in your chart and mother like figures, a representation of who that is. So listen up to all three of them of what this could mean for you. So we're going to start with uh, Aries rising. Okay, Aries, rising sun, moon. This new moon occurs in your eighth house, op opposing Uranus in the second house. So Uranus in the second house signifies potential crisis or opportunities regarding personal resources, income, investments, financial stability. If it's a challenge then you might face issues like in, 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 not enough funds <laughs> to cover your expenses. It could be job losses or unexpected debts. With the new moon in the eighth house, which is your money with others, your second house is your personal, is your money, and eighth house is money with others. Okay? It encourages you to review your interactions with others. If you're struggling, consider seeking help and building supportive connections or agreements to enhance your security. On the other hand, Uranus in the second may, uh, may grant financial freedom, something you didn't expect could just come and land in your lap. It could be a repayment that you didn't even see coming and it just shows up or increase in income. So prompting you to adjust your dynamics and your, um, with your partner, okay? And partners, whatever that is. This period can also reflect a shift in your self-worth and value and how the leading changes in your relationships as you experience uh, inner transformation and independence and your, the connectiveness evolves and it's initially, it could initially shock those around you, but you know what? They'll get over it. Okay, good luck with that, Aries. Aries. Taurus, Taurus rising. This new moon graces your seventh house, opposing Uranus in the first. And with Uranus residing in your first house for a while now, you've been on um exhilarating journey of self-discovery, personal transformation. It's been there for like a year and a half for you, okay? This personal transformation, this journey has involved deepening your self-understanding, connecting with your inner desires, reshaping your body, refining your attitudes, and realigning with your, um, your own personality and what you believe. You've been un unearthing unique aspects of yourself, and this inner transformation will naturally influence your relationships and those around you. So the new moon in the seventh hurls in a fresh start in love, business, and partnerships that resonate with your evolving inner self. You may adventure into self-employment if you've not done that before, potentially affecting those around you and your business, you know, who you work for, that type of stuff. Um, you could, you may explore open relationships during this time period, leading to some changes in your own um, relationship dynamics. Okay. That's that fright, fly your fruit flag. So with it in your first house, the Uranus is you're on a discovery of your purpose, your message for humanity. As you refine yourself in your relationships, it may require adjustments, fostering honesty, honesty, intimacy. I tried to put those two together and newfound opportunities. It could be an invitation to go, you know, teach on some other some island somewhere so this could lead to changes in your relationships depending on your strength and your adaptability your adaptability taurus listen to that your adaptability think about what that means to you and how do you step into it okay okay gemini this new moon is in your sixth house 
and it's gonna uh, the opposition is in the 12th house it highlights your everyday life routines and structures as well as problems that you're solving the changes and new beginnings are here and they're influenced by the shocking energy in the 12th house which represents your mental health your spiritual well-being your blind spots your bad habits and your hidden talents it could manifest as mental health crisis or transformation in your life that is transformation in your life when you go through that believe me it is okay uranus in the 12th may bring unexpected events or crises that call for flexibility this new moon in your sixth house encourages you to improve your routines your boundaries your self-care and it may signify a spiritual new beginnings or a breakthrough in therapy or self-discovery overall this alignment prompts you to restructure your daily life for better mental and spiritual health you go okay cancer the new moon is in your fifth house in the opposite which is creativity and the opposition is in uranus in the 11th house and so uranus in the 11th house indicates transformation your role within social circles that's yeah that is the house of networking uh you may seek more supportive relationships cut ties with toxic ones this new moon in this fifth house su suggests a search for pleasure and creative expression self-expression it signifies liberation from others opinions and self-discovery rediscovering the joy and the creativity that's within you the seed that you're here to give to humanity this alignment encourages you to break free from unhealthy connections or friendships that um for you to find the strength within you no codependency no codependency here be you boo okay leo rising leo sun and moon this new moon is in your fourth house and it's opposition to uranus in the 10th uranus in the 10th house signifies professional changes and surprises that's usually our that's who we you know that's our career house okay you may receive job offers or experience shifts in your career with this new moon in the fourth house prompts transformation in your home that's family life family and living situation you might need to adapt for changes such as moving for a new job adjusting to a new family dynamic this alignment encourages you to reevaluate your professional and personal life seeking passion and self-expression and exploring that and how you intertwine that um for for your own stage leo for you to create your stage and how you're going to shine that stage shine on that stage out into the world okay virgo rising sun and moon there's a new moon in your third house that's about communication and it's opposition to uranus in your ninth house so uranus in the ninth house suggests shifts in travel education legal matters or um beliefs you may experience ideological changes or unexpected opportunities related to these areas of your life the new moon in the third house indicates new beginnings in communication technology daily routines you know you may start your own youtube channel okay you'll need to create structures rules in your immediate environment 
to achieve your goals and express your ideas. This alignment encourages you to embrace your freedom of expression while maintaining practicality in your everyday life and how that supports you in your life. And that ninth house can be, um, it can be travel too. So you could be integrating something together with all of that and how that's going to support you. Okay. Libra. Libra rising sun and moon. This new moon in your second house, it's your money house, in opposition to Uranus in your eighth house. Uranus in your eighth house can bring disruptions and shared resources, debts, and financial dependencies. The new moon in your second house signals changes in your personal finances and values and how you value yourself, your self-worth. You may need to adapt to shifts in income, expenses, or shared resources. This alignment encourages you to find liberation and freedom in your financial dealings and discover what truly brings you passion and self-worth. That it's that your two money houses. Is, the second house is your personal money, and the eighth house is other people's money. So that could even be your clients who come to you, how they resonate with you. Do they value you? Don't work for those who need you. Work for those who value you, love you, and appreciate you. That is that's a whole shift away from the codependency energy that you sometimes can find yourself in Libra, you little people pleaser, you. Okay. Moving on. Scorpio. Scorpio. For Scorpio, rising suns and moon, this new moon is in your first house. It's about you. Okay. And it's the opposition Uranus is in the seventh house, which is relationship. So this alignment signifies new beginnings related to your identity, your physical body, and your personality. These changes stem from disruptions, surprises, and shocking discoveries in your relationships and your partnerships. Your partner may introduce unexpected elements into your relationship such as exploring an open marriage making significant life changes like moving they may come and tell you they got a new job and they're moving and so then you got to decide what you're going to do with yourself boo okay you'll need to adapt to these changes to refine refine yourself in response to the energy. And since it's in your first house, this is about your personal identity and about you and who you are and how you want to shine that light into the world. And what are your new beginnings with this new moon? Okay. And especially with this Mars Kazemi coming up on Friday. So it's going to be an intense week for you, Scorpio. Okay, all those little Scorpio risings, it is an intense week for you. Okay, um, um, Sagittarius rising, sun, moon rising. The new moon is in your 12th house and um, the opposition to Uranus is in the 6th house. So Uranus in the 6th house brings transformation, surprises, and changes to your everyday life. Your health and your service to others. You may experience sudden shifts in work or decide to pursue a new path, like becoming a nutritionist with, because that's all about service and health and those related things. The sixth house is okay. So it could incur the 12th house energy encourages you to focus on your mental health too your spirituality and your stability. So this alignment prompts you to find balance between the material and the spiritual aspects of your life. It's awakening. Let's wake up and see where it takes us. What does the other realms have to bring you into this everyday life? Okay. Capcorn. Capcorn. 
Capricorn rising sun moon. It's in your 11th house in opposition to Uranus in the fifth house. That's creativity. Okay. So Uranus in the fifth house brings shocking discoveries related to romance, creativity, and children. You know, it's like unexpected pregnancies, that kind of stuff. So this can lead to new opportunities to work with others and to change your whole role within the collective. For example, it could involve a creative project being picked up or a personal struggle turning into a way to help others. This alignment highlights the importance of adapting to both positive and challenging changes in your creative and your social life. What else have I got to say about that? That 11th house is, uh, that's networking and your social, this, the new moon is in that. So it could be bringing new networks into your life and what your role is within those networks and, and what will be um, vibrating to you. Okay. Okay. Hey, Aquarius, this new moon is in your 10th house. And its opposition is the is Uranus in the fourth house. So this alignment signifies new beginnings in your public life, your career status, and your reputation. These changes stem from surprises, disruptions, and transformation in your home, your family, and your living situation. Uranus in the fourth house house might bring shocking developments like um, partners, pregnancies, changes in your living arrangements, your partner just flies out of the, out of the coop and they're gone. You wake up and they're not there anymore. Okay. This could require you, or you may be the one that flies away to adapt in new responsibilities while balancing your career. Alternatively, there may be an opportunity to reinvent yourself during this time period. Reinvent your career. You are the boss of you. The financial situation to address unexpected home relation challenges. So during this time period, you might get a big download and aha of a whole new future that you hadn't even thought about, Aquarius. You little futuristic self you, that you are. Okay. Bye. Pisces, the new moon in your ninth house in opposition to Uranus in your third. This alignment brings new beginnings related to travel, to education, to publishing, to legal matters, and faith. These changes result from surprising events in communication, exams, writing, siblings, neighbors. It's all the, it's those houses. Oh, that house is all about those things. Uranus in the third house suggests a desire for more freedom in your communication, your thoughts, and your local environment. You may be undergoing internal changes in your mindset and your attitude. Uh, the new moon in the ninth invites you to become the teacher, the mentor to explore new education opportunities. You can also um, signify a shift in your beliefs, ideologies, and prompt unexpected events in your immediate surroundings, Pisces. Okay. That's it for the week in this new moon. And I'll be coming at you with more in-depth energy of this Mars Kazemi that we haven't had these energies, as I said, since 1991, 93. So within that, remember, you have the power to protect your peace. And that, you know how you do that? You go into your heart and you drop the energy down through the center into the core earth in to the crystalline heart of earth herself and allow earth to nurture you and show you how much she loves you and how much she appreciates you 
You can always go there when it seems like, you know, it's not earth that's crazy. It's humanity that's batshit crazy. So when you're, when there's too much going on in the astral plane, just go in and go into the heart of earth because she loves us. She loves us so much. The unconditional love that she has for us is just amazing when you feel it. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for coming to earth. Thank you for incarnating in a DNA skin suit and choosing to be here on this planet at this time of transformation. And it's Kimberly with Celestial Juju. So like, share, comment, just do a heart to me. Any of those things, it really makes the you know, it picks up. It's like the bots pick up the rhythm and then they show the YouTube to more people. And then, so that makes me want to come back and create more. Cause that's all I want to do. I just want to be a creator, a creator of my own world. So may you be blessed in your creations in your own world. Dance your dance, be your freaky self, dance into the shadow, into the darkness, it all the way down to the bones and you'll find light within the bones their self and that will expand out into the world and vibrate at a higher frequency for all of those to enjoy may you be blessed